Well, from here on out, it's going to get less uh, garbage. I don't think we have any more creeps for the rest of the stream. Never mind. Never mind, there's a creep. Although I don't think he's a pedophile. I don't think he's nearly confident enough to be... <laughs> That's a fucked up joke. <laughs> That's such a fucked up joke. <laughs> oh, Dave. Anyway, he's smoking a cigar. This is Dave. This is sm this is Lord of Gloop. This is the Lord of Gloop, you know. Dave's cooking show. I'm the biggest fan of Dave's cooking show. Uh, I'm the person who's watched the most Dave's cooking show, definitely. And, um, more, even more than Dave. Uh, and this is him smoking and ranting. It's the sad reality for progressives and leftists. You love it. Uh, this is actually where OK Groomer is applicable. Hey there, Chuz. There you go. Um, I am the only guy. All right, let's see what, let's see what he has to say. Damn, he's so fucking badass, bro. Wait, 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 hold on. I feel fucking inadequate, dude. He is giving me big time. He's big dogging me right now, okay? He's alpha dogging me. And it just feels I, I can't. I. Okay, mine's smaller, but it's more potent, okay? So it counts. We're the same now. We're the same. I already knew about this series. His political content is just usually ass. What a bad dog. Oh, so wait. Holy shit. That was the intro. This thing has a fucking intro? Oh, and he had a goatee at the time. Rough. Okay. We're kind of in the middle of this. Lawnmower in the back is nice. Uh, freaking Alex and Fitty Biz. I swear Dave is just trying to be uh, <laughs> TJ Kirk from 2011. Maybe. TJ... Uh, <coughs> Is eternally more intelligent. I appreciate the Budweiser. <coughs> uh, this primary season. There's a dog! This is the best part. Hey, Dave, I have a question for you. Why is the camera centered on your little dick? Alright, scrap it. So we're kind of in the middle of this. Alright, scrap it. Season. He didn't scrap it. Scrap it. So we're kind of in the middle of this primary season, right? This is great. I love I love the idea of Dave telling himself to cut this later, but drinking too many Budweiser's while in the editing room, the editing cave, the Lord of Patriarchy editing throne room, uh, and forgetting to actually scrap that part. I love that. <coughs> Dr. Wolf, thanks for the prime for 21 months. Right. And the progressives are still holding out hope that they're going to win. That they're somehow going to rally and a bunch of new progressives are going to be elected into public office. Mm -hmm. I have news for you. They're never going to win. Their ceiling is probably the Senate, and I don't even see it getting that far. The reason is, despite the pleas of and the constant assurances of Mr. Kalinsky and the Young Turks and Hi Daisy. Kyle Kalinsky? Okay. And even my dog Daisy knows this is bullshit. Despite their constant assurances that oh, progressive values are popular and they poll so well and blah, 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 blah. If you look at the polls for five seconds, they are bullshit. They oh. take one stat. Like abortion. Yes, 70% of Americans do agree with abortion. Okay. And then that should be provided. First trimester only. To the second trimester, it drops to 25%. Kind of a big drop. Okay. And drop for abortion for any reason, a.k.a. using it as birth control, which is the vast, vast, vast majority of abortions. Birth 
birth control. To call it birth control is is strong. Uh. Dave, I would love for you to have the confidence to talk to me about this subject. But you won't. Um, you won't. Uh, so the reason people get abortions is not because they are using its birth control. Uh, it has nothing to do with like preventing pregnancy, really. It has to do with not being able to afford the pregnancy. Like sometimes it's about birth control, but usually that's in that's a person who is ignorant on how to prevent a like pregnancy, usually a child. And I think, Dave, do you think children should raise children? Do you think children should be forced to carry pregnancies to term? You know what I mean? Like that the birth control like most abortions happen like through miscarriage and in me medical stuff like and there aren't classified socially as abortions like they're not at an abortion clinic they're at hospitals and stuff and um, these happen all the time um i don't know man you don't have the you don't have the support there either take medicare for all they constantly say it pulls really well yeah as an idea then when you ask the question would you support higher taxes to pay for it? Support drops to nothing. Like literally 10%. <clears throat> and when you bring up, well, you'll have to give up the health care you have from your job that you actually like, it plummets even further. So, unfortunately, progressives like to live in a bubble where they simply... I, I, I don't know. Simply just think that the... The one poll number they pick is the correct one. Oh. Um, so on the topic of universal health care, uh, the, <laughs> the, the the policy, I guess, like what the progressives want for health care is, is not that you lose your health care through your employer in fact i'm fine if you want to continue to get that health care that how i would promote this <clears throat> is just to say anybody can get the government's health care i wouldn't even take private health care away okay i wouldn't even do it i would just say that that like you can have the government's health care it's available everywhere and you can choose at any place at any place to get it uh, 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 paid for, essentially, like the government will spot you. Um, and this is just this is just to to <laughs> essentially you'd get this by capitalists, and then capitalists would go, okay, that leaves us a private option. Um, but then the government just sets into place the prices for these things; they can't be overcharged for these things. Um, and you could set the prices at at levels that aren't profitable. And so sure, you can free you can choose to do private health care and you can choose to have an employer that that does it and that's fine, but you can't get better health care and you certainly can't get it for cheaper because here we are. And eventually like what happens uh uh is that it just phases out and becomes like, well, obviously I'm going to choose the best option. You know what I mean? Like, if you just give the public option, essentially, to people, and they set the prices of everything, and then for the consumer, it's fucking free. Yeah. Everyone's going to choose it. <clears throat> yeah, unstable access is not good enough. Of course not. Like, Dave, what if someone loses their job? Just get another one? Dave, do you have health care through your job? Like, come on. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Well, that was my choice. Okay. And I still think that if you get, I don't know, a really hearty dick callus, then you should be able to get it treated. All hospitals accept all insurance. Uh, they should, yeah. 
Yeah, not all hospitals. Um, well, I, I just don't think like if you're if you're a person who likes the free market, um, I shouldn't be locked into like any kind of networks. Like as a person who likes freedom, like you just lose this debate a hundred times out of a hundred. Like Dave, come talk to me about this. It's just so silly. Like there's 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 actually no fucking points you have. <laughs> It's not even about polling either. It's just like literally the policy is better. I don't care. How about this? I'll steel man your argument. How about this? Steel manning your argument, Dave. If universal health care polled at 0%, it would still be a better idea. <laughs> because it's a better idea. Especially in a market where you can modify everything. So. That's the argument I would make. And you'd be forced to defend, but you wouldn't be able to. Damn, bro, dramatic. I couldn't possibly yeah, the smoke problem more of this. There's a lot of them, like Kalinsky and the Humanist Report and Pac-Man and TYT especially. They don't live in the real world. The fun side of the way you describe it is conservatives end up bitching about how unfair it is for corporations to be outcompeted by a superior option. Exactly. Free market? Okay. Government will just provide one of a market option the same way the up the usps is an option you know what i mean you could choose fedex but you can't compete with the usps in general so um yeah like the military that's a private i mean they make money on that uh i don't know what happened to dave in 2012 i asked him to make a video ranting about todd aiken's forcible rape comment dave said that fetuses are meatballs until they have a brain and she's young enough she can fucking die from pregnancy so a child has to die so a child can be born when did he say that sky comet do you have like the actual like receipt of that rather than just your chat log like just this like in a log or something in a video <clears throat> 2012 the entirety of 2012 really help what I asked, does it? World, They live in a world where they think Twitter represents the majority and they do not hear any opinions outside of their realm. And if they do, and if somebody does disagree with them, well then they're just a no good rotten evil piece of shit jackass douchebag asshole. Well you are those things but that's because of the way you act. But that's not like you can disagree with those things and not be the that as well. <laughs> but I promise I won't bully you, Dave. Because I know you'd be worried about that. I won't bully you. Come talk to me. Ah, by the way, if you're just watching this on stream so no one thinks, well, I contacted... Uh, please watch this on stream, Dave. Uh, actual Jake number uh, 3438 on Discord. You know, hashtag three four three eight. Uh, no space in between the hashtag and actual Jake. That's me on Discord. You should friend request me. Don't have a Discord? Uh, I'm on Twitter. I'm also here on Twitch and on YouTube. Contact me, my friend. Contact me. I'm here. Yeah, there we go. Just copy to make sure. Actual Jake number 3438. That's me on Discord, buddy. Hit me up. Who nobody should listen to anyway. Wow, what a long pause. The Holy reality fuck. is that they don't want to deal with is simply this. Okay, what's the simple? Progressives yeah. are not the majority. <clears throat> well, that's true. I knew that. I'm not a progressive, though. I'm a lefty. I'm even further. I'm even further in the minority on this one. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> Look, <laughs> I'm under no illusions. I, I don't know why. Maybe progressives, maybe, maybe like liberals, maybe Democrats, maybe Nancy Pelosi and people like that. Uh, although she's not a progressive, but you know what I mean. Like, like the, that crew. Elizabeth Warren. Um, maybe they're de delusional or something, but not fucking me, bro. I am, I am under no illusion that most of this country is filled with dumbasses.
Damn it, I, I actually, in the middle of saying that, I, I forgot I told him I wasn't going to bully him. Now I'm not going to bully you. Dubert, thanks for going to PK Fire Alpha. It's okay, you say mean shit all the time. I don't really care. You can say mean shit about me. Who gives a shit? The bummer is, the big bummer is, he and I both acknowledge who the Alpha is in this relationship. It's me. Me. You can't not fuck and be the alpha. In fact, they're not even a majority in the Democrat on the Democrat side. <laughs> I love doing that alpha dog shit with the Republicans because I sort of buy into it, even if they don't admit it. It's super funny. <laughs> I get so fucking toxic around toxic guys. Is that weird? It's like I think it's a I think it's a fault of mine. I get so you guys know this. You guys know this about me. Toxic guys, specifically toxic guys, make me super toxic. <laughs> I can't help it. I just fucking yeah, it's just like fire fire. Ah! Cuz I just I remember the pageantry of it all, you know? I don't really have friends that are like that anymore. Like guys have friends where they only make fun of each other. That's a whole thing. That's why they're insecure. I'm serious. I don't really have friends like that anymore. Um, we are all positive to each other. It's very strange uh, to live this life. Um, I don't know why Dave was on the screen. Maybe I wish he was my friend. Um, but still, I, I don't really have those friends anymore. And I think that's an interesting sort of development in my life. And in the, in the lives of uh, my other friends. I don't know what other friends they have outside of me and how they are i assume they're not all perfect like me because i'm great but um i may be the best friend you could have chat and i'm only slightly uh toot my own horn there i think that's the i think how about this chat that's one of my politics as well other people should think that you're a good friend i think that's that's what you should do <laughs> you don't banter with your guy friends we absolutely banter it's just not an always antagonistic relationship. And in fact, I would say the banter skews positive. Because uh, banter isn't talking shit the whole time. Like, banter banter is... Like, literally today, I'll, I'll read to you a conversation. Um, I won't give you any names or anything. Uh, but I'll just read a conversation because I thought it was... This is a great example of how this entire chat works. Uh, let me see. Wow, did I go up too far already? Yeah, I did. Holy shit. Um, man, time goes by. Uh, so we were talking about our, our nicknames when we were kids. And, uh, one of my friends, uh, who I'm sure he wouldn't care, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna share it just because I don't have his permission explicitly. Um, uh, one of them, one of them said uh, that his nickname was Hemroid. Uh, been a pain in the ass since 1990, baby. And I asked why Hemroid. Um, uh, and then my friend said because it rhymes with um, uh, actually his middle name. Um, and I'm a pain in the ass. And it was a familial thing. And it was apparently like a family nickname. And then I said, wait, your parents nicknamed you that? My brother's nickname is Doodoo. -doo. That's true, by the way, like poop. Um, and then I said, uh, I'm sure coding your entire existence as a burden hasn't flavored a single part of your life. Uh, with like a little joke emoji. Anyway, that's an example of banter in my chat. That is, it's not because we're fucking a group of wholesome people. It's just because we're a bunch of guys that sort of learn together how to be men <laughs> i'm not kidding this has been such a I, I i love talking about this and i'm sorry that i'm talking about it over a dave video but maybe i'm not maybe maybe as a as a measure of just how fucking differently we are built i a man with friends with deep loving friendships and dave not that um, I think it's important to understand that where we come from different different spaces, and I really genuinely want you to know that they exist in cishet spaces, and I didn't do it. It happened to all of us, okay? I, j just like I want you to know, not everybody in there is het, 
I think everybody in there is cis. I'll let you know in ten more years. Um, but not everybody in there is hat. Uh, but uh, but most of them are. And and man, I'm telling you that you should have a little bit of hope. Okay, not a lot. Just like just like smidgens. We exist out there, and I don't know why. I don't know how the chemistry of of fate and existence and my life and socialism or not socialism like socializing rather i don't know how that made me a person because i don't make it i come from the woods and republicans and fucking like racist people and there's no reason i should exist not my mom but my dad's side my dad's in personality um and then a lot of the people out there and stuff and like the school i went to and like the city i i grew up near like None of it points to the direction that the, the man sitting in front of you right now that you enjoy is... And, and, and I'm telling you, my friends uh, all, all experienced a similar, a similar sort of renaissance. We started in a place that was, I would say, a generally normal bro, semi-quasi-toxic, like, like chum group chat and we did it for fantasy football and we still do it for fantasy football we still play all play fantasy football together and we will soon um (laughs) but like we we've just all especially over the last like five years specifically like we've been in that group chat for like a decade dude um it's actually crazy like so 2012 ish maybe a little bit earlier and um i can't believe it's been that long but uh like we're best friends. We we we've talked every day. Like at about eight of us, and I don't know, man. They just, they just all sort of, we independently flavored that. So I don't know. I don't know what it is in in the water around there in society, but there there's groups of us, and I know that most of most of my chat is not what I am, right? A cishet white fella. Okay, some of you are, but not not most. We exist, and I don't know why. So maybe a little hope. Maybe a little. I shouldn't exist. Again, during the 2020 election, or the 2020 primary, excuse me, when it was Bernie Sanders, mm-hmm. Kyle Kalinske himself said Bernie Sanders was trying to win 30% of the Democrat primary vote. 30% of half the country. That's 15% of the vote if he were to make it to the general. How, wait, how does he think primaries work? where's the other 85 gonna go oh yeah that's right why do you think i was rooting for bernie you were rooting for bernie ironically because you think that the rest of the people are so far like 30 percent of a vote on the democratic side just implies that there's a liberal majority on the left side and it's for the record the liberal majority in the country is more than 50% of the, the the population. It's just not more than 50% of the vote um, because of turnout. But that's changing. Uh, I think Hillary Clinton supporters are closer politically to Bernie Sanders than modern Trump supporters. And and I think that he would have had their support. Like I, I, what does he think? Like, I just don't think Trump is is appealing to liberals and their sensibilities because they they they're like, it's all surface shit for them. But it's like oh, he's a sexist, not like the deep other stuff. Like yes, he's a sexist and that's bad. But like there's so much other bullshit that they don't even realize. You know what I mean? But they sort of scoff at it. Look at that. Oh, that's not that's not Ellie. That's not Ellie Chan. You gotta start to learn to recognize them. Look at that fucking tail. That doesn't look like a bog rat at all. That looks like a beautiful, handsome prince. That's Biko, 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 Biko. Uh, Tea with Goblins, thanks for 100 bitties. Probably for growing as a person, Jake, but you won't be complete till you're in cat ears. Good luck. The... The sad reality is, is people don't want more government. They want less. They don't want the government to... Bet. Let's do it. ...take care of their problems for them. They want the government to stay the hell out of the way. 
Yes, and I would argue correctly, because I'm correct, that leftists are not only more free and do more of this small government shit than the right, but then the right actively does the opposite of this every time they're in power. Literally every time. So... And let them solve their problems. You know who does want the government to solve their problems? Losers. Lo D Dave. 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 We don't get to call other people losers. Okay? Unless we're confident enough to call ourselves losers. Or. Or. We've grown to not be a loser anymore. These are the only two ways you can do it. You got an A, be able to call yourself a loser, and be like, yep. Yeah. Or B, you gotta you gotta not be one. And this this criteria has not been met. <clears throat> Dave, list your inadequacies for me immediately. Or Stop being a loser before you can do this. Losers who can't be bothered to do shit on their own. Thankfully, despite what all those people will to every online progressive will tell you, mm -hmm. the country, thankfully, is not with them. Damn, he's so fucking cool, dude. God, what a bad dog. I wish I was that cool. Uh, Chad, I have terrible news for you. Terrible news. Dave tried to recreate a McDonald's meal number two combo. All right, we have a McDonald's number two value. What the fuck am I looking at? Are those frozen? <gasps> oh. Okay. All right. So we really are just making shit worse. New meal done. Okay. By the way, just saying, I worked at McDonald's. Uh, uh, in back in the day, uh, the grill was hot when we put the burgers on it. <laughs> so you've already failed. I weigh here on Dave's These are just going to boil. These are going to boil and be gray. Get ready for a ton of bubbles around these. And gray meat. Congratulations. Aaron, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 4 p.m. What we have here is four two-ounce patties of 80-20. And uh, I did the same. They're not even sizzling I yet. Do, as I always do. It's just too cold. I did freeze these patties uh, for just 24 too hours. Cold. Just too the reason cold. is, just too if you refrigerate them, cold. they do have a tendency to sometimes come apart. So freeze them. Wait, you will why? have to flip them often, though. I will say that. Why would they and come you're apart? You're going to have to break a rule and press down lightly before the first flip only, just to make sure that the burger is getting good contact. What's with this anti-pressing thing, Dave? We seriously got to. Okay, look, cooking. We just finished cleaning the garage yesterday we got to finish some stuff in the basement then the kitchen stuff can get moved downstairs and cooking streams begin i have to i will i will show you how to make a fucking burger dude i promise you i will figure it out for you jesus christ i i, I can't believe i just this is just the saddest shit it, it falls apart because he he doesn't start them hot, and they're 80 20, so they don't bind because the fat's not rendering fast enough. They're just boiling apart. He's making ground beef because he doesn't know how to cook stuff. You can make 80, in fact, 80 20 burgers are perfect for this. You can make a smash burger situation, they're perfect for this. You don't even need to use oil. That's how fucking perfect these are. 80 20 is like the, the cut you want in your burger. When you when you make a smashy boy, like ones on flat top planches like that, I I fucking. So they take a couple of minutes aside, and we should be ready to go for the next step. Why do you think they sir, sell eighty twenty, bro? I'm I'm just gently pressing down. Don't worry, not gonna get any juice out. 
But this is the There's no wor- don't worry about juice. You don't know how to cook these. That's why your burgers are dry. Ah, you can hear it in my voice. I'm just getting whiny. I'm just like, oh, fuck you. I don't know. I can't even fake wine. I can only real wine. But like, man, man, I'm just getting whiny. You're doing this wrong. You're doing this so fucking wrong. Don't do this, chat. The only time after this... What after does fat do? Lift, do Make it taste press. good. What do you mean? Okay. Couple of minutes. Oh, God. Literally, it's about a Look minute. Look at all those bubbles. Minute, maybe a minute and a half aside, and they're done. Now, add, of course, one slice of American cheese to each burger. Create a little steam. It's not how McDonald's does it. And they'll melt right up. You got about not how 30 McDonald's more seconds. Get them off the grill. Get them on a the plate. I could make you a rest. McDonald's burger very fast. Okay, we're all ready for assembly. You can still wrap them. I decided to soup it up a little bit by making these double burgers because, I mean, they're like one and a half ounces. So, two patties per burger. And again, this is not trying to recreate the McDonald's uh, number two value meal. Uh huh. Then why did we freeze the meat? This isn't me doing it my way. Then why did we freeze the meat? So this is what I wanted to do. So fuck you. Double burgers. Dude. Dave. Debate me on cooking, too. Debate me, bro. Actually, don't debate me. Can we have a conversation? <laughs> I really don't want to debate. Can we have a conversation? And we just, like... Talk about all the ways that you're fucking wrong about stuff. You talk about me too. I don't care. And then a little bit of ketchup. Then, of course, little drip of mustard. Some fresh dill pickles. Not that crap that's been sitting in a green vinegar thing for nine years before you use it. That's how McDonald's does it, though. All right. Time to, uh... Electro Retrax in nine months! Dave is not designed to make logical sense, Jake. He will. I will... I will... He is He is just a tesseract. Put the top bun on, and that we I are trying with to the burgers, bring into three-dimensional space. All right, we're not just going to go with a standard little bit of... Uh, Dry buns is McDonald's. Coca-Cola for this dish. No, we got a shot of crack and rum. Okay. And then top it off with Coca-Cola. Give yourself mm, a rum and coke. Good, Remember, this is an extra value in number two my way. And this was the hardest thing because I do love McDonald's fries, but I decided to go with curly fries. So, Why? that's McDonald's extra value meal number two. Done my way. Done. Done my way. Done. Okay. Here's what I'm going to do. I could probably do every menu item on... Easily on uh, the McDonald's menu. I could do that. <laughs> <clears throat> this would be easy, man. This stuff is not hard. I know... You just got to do a few things correct. Just a few things. All, almost every one of these, I'm telling you, Dave, almost every one of these could be saved by two things. Number one, just put a light on this. It looks so dark and shitty and, like, sad. Put a, put a light on this. And number two, let things be hot before you cook with them. That's it. Preheat your oven. Make sure that your skillet is hot. <laughs> Heat up your oil in the fucking pan. <laughs> I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate. All right, so that's the end of that one. <laughs> Which one do I want to do now? All right, he's making some smokehouse spaghetti. I don't know what Dave's gotten into. I'm concerned about the beginnings of this, but maybe this is just a prep station, and he's going to, like, smash these with his hands and make, like, a quick spaghetti sauce 
This could be maybe it's good. Maybe it's a good thing. I would just blitz him in the can, but um, or bowl like put this in a bowl. I don't know why he's. It's a casserole again. Fuck. I bet he puts things in the oven while it's preheating. I mean, you can. It just depends on what you're doing. But I, normally, if it says preheat, just preheat it, guys. Just just preheat it. It's fine. Take a second. It'll be better. I promise. Anyway, there's a reason it's like that. Okay, let's start the uh, start smoked it. spaghetti sauce off. Smoked spaghetti. What you got here is two... Are we going to broil these? 28 ounce cans of San Marzano. San Marzano. Tomatoes. Why did you do it like that? Cut. Okay, don't do it like this. Um, pull them out of the thing. Put them on your cutting board. Do this safely and not with a fillet uh, knife. See. Hello, with a fuck a fucking fillet knife. Use your chef yes. knife. Is this a, a, actually is it a chef couple knife? tablespoons of olive oil? A it teaspoon looks like a fillet knife. A this is dangerous. Pepper, and stupid. And a teaspoon and it of slides around. Bay seasoning. Um. I cut the tomatoes lengthwise, as you can see here. Yeah, this is a fillet knife. Um, don't do that. Just take them out, put them on your cutting board, just real quick, okay? And then put them in here, and then pour the juice on, or pour the juice in, and then put them on there. That's it. It'll be fine. And you can use a bench scraper. You should buy a bench scraper, chat. Uh, uh, if you don't know what those are, they're, uh, I'll show you. Bench scrapers. They're, they're game changers. I have three. They're amazing. Uh, these. Use them in restaurants. Um, and it's just something for you to take, slide onto the bench or the cutting board, and f slide and grab a bunch of stuff. You see them use them in, uh, in cooking stuff all the time. This is called a bench scraper. I have, I actually have this OXO one. I have this. Um, I have this one. And I have another one that came with my bread thingies, my banatons. A little bread card, like a Scooby one. Oh, and I have a, another big another big one, sort of more like this. But it's a different color. And then I'll add... Tons of baking stuff. Yeah, they're just good for everything. They're a perfect utensil, especially if you like chop a bunch of stuff and have to pick up a bunch of chopped stuff all at once instead of using the side of your knife um, or just your hands or sliding them into a bowl. You can use the bench scraper to quickly do that. A 15-ounce can of tomato sauce... And then bring this outside and put it on the smoker. Put it on I the smoker? The smoker to okay. 225. Are we going to season 200. these bad boys? Again, temperature is not key. With are we seasoning this. these bad boys? Wanna, you're going more for Dave, a flavor Dave, than you are, are the actually cooking it. Tell me the bad boys get seasoned. And as you can see here, the smoker's going great. Wow, what got a good my shot. Got tomatoes right there and got my Italian sauce. So we're just smoking the tomatoes. A lot of smoke. So, okay. uh, yeah, if you need to finish up. I would 100% rather. It, it's in season. This is, oh, wait, this premiered December 31st. Never mind. Um, okay. The uh, <laughs> sausages in the oven. Wow, this is you just need rough. To get them to 165. All right, next step. All righty, after a couple smoked. of hours on the smoker, it's time to turn these tomatoes into sauce. I would, so, so anyway, I would, if, if they were in season, which would be preferable, um, I would put these right on the grill and let them get um, let them get a little charred, and the char is going to taste really, really good inside a sauce when you blitz it. So, with your finest food processor, of course, making a mess of everything. Of course. As you go, place uh, the tomatoes. Of course. In your food processor, slam on the lid, and then liquefy the motherfuckers. And then uh, you'll kind of see a bowl right here. Transfer that in after they've been, you know, thoroughly processed and liquefied. All right. You, may you could also run that through a strainer. You have to move it around a little bit to get like any that. remaining bits all chopped up. Okay, now it's time to season our sauce. Finally. You want to start by adding Salt. two cloves of garlic. Salt. Mint. Just right in there? I really think... You should have put some oil down in the pan, then put garlic in here. And you want to start by adding a teaspoon of chipotle powder. And now, the if chipotle you can't powder. Now, find chipotle powder, or the chipotle then just powder. Use cayenne. It's virtually almost the same thing. They're not. Cayenne is a sharper um, spice. It's like a pointy spice. Um, and, uh, chipotle is, uh, smoked, or it's dried jalapeno and, um, has a nice smoky round heat to it. So they're, they're very different. 
Um, you guys should you guys should learn. Not you guys. Like he should he should just taste some stuff. And then you want to add two teaspoons of mm. dried basil. All of this would serve from like it would it would do better if you tossed all of this into a pan of hot olive oil. It would infuse that olive oil and just get it toasty for literally like thirty seconds. And a tablespoon of Italian seasoning. Okay. And sure. don't want to add the sausage just yet. Kind of want to give this. A chance it's just gross. To, You're not uh, building flavor, dude. It's it's gonna taste just watery. Just a little bit. Is there salt? And of course, uh, salt. A little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper. Finally, taste. bro. I would have salted at the smoking stage, by the way. It would have helped pull you... some of that water out in the smoking stage, um, and would have helped get uh, some of that surface area dehydrated, which means some of that smoky flavor would settle in to the. Uh, tomatoes a little bit better instead of being just like bouncing off because they're being pushed away by the steam that's evaporating off of your wet tomatoes do you guys see how just a little bit of food science goes a long way like just thinking about how food works for just two seconds you can see how you could build flavor along the way and have a much more robust and flavorful and enjoyable experience if you're spending all this time making a stupid fucking spaghetti sauce then do it right Giving it a chance to simmer. Time to add the sausage and reduce the heat even more. Why are we worried about getting the sausage up to 165 in the smoker if we're going to cook it again later? I would rather get the smoked flavor on the sausage and pull it early and finish it cooking in here so that you don't have tough, dry pieces of sausage. Oh, and make sure to splash and get everything fucking dirty while you're doing this. Yeah, do that. Okay, into a pot of... Also, not for nothing, I would rather have had that sausage cut up and used down at the bottom of that when we did the garlic stuff and used some of that fat to render out. Again, that'd have to require a hot skillet, um, which, again, would just, just flavor this whole thing much more smoky, much more flavorful. Of salted boiling water, we add our spaghetti. You'll need about a pound of spaghetti for this. A minute uh, under the box, uh, so it's al dente. Um, I like to take off at least 30 seconds to a full minute of the minimum package cooking time on any package of pasta. I'm he called it, brave. He called so it. So we're about <clears throat> eight or so minutes away from uh, this dish being done. Now to you serve are it, good at cooking start in off life. With a bed of okay. spaghetti. I know I don't normally do like this. But then you want to put that wonderful, wonderful smokehouse spaghetti sauce on top. I will say, this was actually spicy. How, what, where, when, and why, I don't know. What do you mean? You put like a tablespoon of cayenne in it. <laughs> Chipotle. Like, what? What's he think Chipotle? Like, he. <laughs> but. It's going to say so too. Smokehouse titty, spaghetti. Titty. Done. Done. Jesus Christ. Oh, what? Brian made an actual lobster roll. God, I could wish wish we could just watch that. But instead, we're going to watch Dave makes a pepperoni pizza grilled cheese in a pot? What are we putting in here? I don't even know. Pizza sauce? Is he making pizza sauce for it? All right, welcome to Dave's Cooking Show, airing at 4 o'clock every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And that's... Never had spaghetti with sausage. Really? Spaghetti... Spaghetti is a thing that you can have with lots of stuff. I don't really fuck with spaghetti, though. 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. Yep, airing. So, I'm assuming YouTube would adjust to whatever your local time would be. Anyway, we're making a pepperoni pizza grill... How does he think time works? Why is he still not understanding time? Grilled cheese today. First thing we got to do is make the pizza sauce, of course. Don't let the oil so get hot. About two it's scary. Two tablespoons of olive oil. Add one to two cloves of low minced fucking garlic. heat. Depends on how garlicky you want it. I like it a little more on the garlicky side, so I added closer to two. All right, and then give this over a low heat a chance to toast up a little bit. Don't doesn't need to be a low heat. 
Okay, as you as can see, as the garlic attention. is starting to toast not, up just nicely. Not piping hot. Now it's time to add one six ounce can. Well, shouldn't be smoking. And just glistening. Of tomato the oil is glistening. It's time for stuff to go in it. Can and you chat? And then add one 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. Now there is a bit of a debate on pizza sauce. Is there? Should it be cooked first or should it be a virgin sauce? Virgin sauce simply means oh. it hasn't been. Have we watched him say this same fucking spiel before? There's, it de <laughs> the debate on pizza sauce is cooked or uncooked only for certain types of pizza. No one really cares in general. Um, it's like Neapolitano, um, uh, New York pizza sometimes has some disputes. Which one's better? But like, just do whatever fucking tastes good, bro. Whatever you like. What's gonna happen if you have a an uncooked sauce is you're gonna have a brighter, more acidic vibe in your in your thing and that can be really good especially if you're eating outside pizza outside with with uncooked sauce is just a vibe dude and i recommend it um and also if you're gonna use really fresh ingredients like this is why neapolitano pizza often has no cooked sauce although it's not 100 percent um and uses just fresh basil which i grow on my windowsill for this exact reason um and 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 fresh mozzarella and that's really it those are the three ingredients from margarita and it's like or you know like a neapolitano it's delicious man I don't know, and then sometimes you know you make a make a sauce like this that's gonna have a uh, you know that that olive oil is gonna diffuse through. It's gonna have a, closer to a marinara feel. You're gonna get a little bit more body to it. It's gonna be a little bit more heavy. And that's it. And cooked and it's cooked when you make the pizza, basically. I do both. It just depends on my mood. I just decided this time around we were gonna cook the sauce before I made the sandwich. And salt and pepper to taste. Again, a little easier on the salt because the tomato paste and the crushed tomatoes already have salt in them. But I kind of went uh, generous on the pepper. Okay, now add a teaspoon of dried basil, a half a teaspoon of dried oregano, a pinch of sugar. Uh, it's kind of optional. But it, the, the sugar kind of takes away the Tin. tinniness God damn it. of the canned tomatoes. He just really knows like three and things. And basically just stir occasionally and over that medium low heat, let this simmer for 20 to 30 minutes and then take it off the uh Oh, fuck. It's, it lit a, it it lit a blaze. And uh, let it rest for... So do you see how it's not incorporating and that oil is just sitting on the sides of this? It's cause it was warm when he put it in. At least an hour. You do kind of want the sauce closer to room temperature. It's got to emulsify, and now it's just gonna separate and be uh, broken the whole time. Dish. It's gonna be awful. All right, let's start making the sandwich. Uh, what we have here what? is two slices of sourdough bread. Okay. Followed by two slices okay, so we're like of cooking mozzarella this. cheese. It is important you don't yeah, have to use mozzarella if you don't want to, but it is important we have time. to put the we're cheese first you'll see why in a minute you'll Followed see why in a minute so that we don't get the sauce pepperoni. sogging up the basically bread. pepperoni that's basically a little bit bigger not how i do it like someone who could be an all right dude but for some reason he decides to choose food violence thoughts uh i don't know if that's true or not electro retro thank you for the 10 bucks i appreciate you um i wish dave could be saved Dave, Dave is an insecure man that hides behind uh, being a shit face because it's better to give you that version than to be vulnerable enough to show you whatever version of himself he loathes, um, which is probably a fine person. You know what I mean? Probably just a guy, but he hates himself. It's really sad, dude. I should be a therapist. I wouldn't be helpful, but I would know your your fucking problem. I shouldn't be a therapist. I should be... I, they should make a new position called, What's Your Deal? And I just... we I vibe check you for a while, and, and we have conversations, and I, and I figure out your deal. Because it is depressing. Grocery store deli. This isn't how I would do it, I don't think. So about three slices per side... Okie dokie. Now we're going to add that sauce that we made. I actually think I would be helpful. It's been cooled down. And this is why you want to put all the other ingredients first. 
is because if you put the sauce first, it'll basically just get totally sucked up by the bread, kind of making a soggy piece of shit sandwich. So sauce goes on last. Okay, I technically lied. You don't need another, another whole slice. slice of mozzarella one? cheese just one. for each sandwich. Disgusting. Okay, so we're not we're gonna have a gloop. Wait, there's two different sandwiches? I thought it was one sandwich we were putting together. <sighs> Alright, then top it off with obviously another piece of bread. And then butter the top one. And by the way, in the background you should be having a griddle going at about medium to medium high heat. We're heating we're preheating something. Alrighty. Put these uh, butter side down, and then obviously we're going to take the interim and butter the top side. They'll take about, I don't know, I think these took like like three to five me. minutes a side, something like that. Just basically keep an eye on them and flip them until they're both golden brown. It's a grilled cheese, Dave. You're making a grilled cheese. I know it's technically a melt, but let's like be real. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> I can't believe he... Fucked up the first flip of the grilled cheese. I cannot believe it. It's a grilled cheese, David. Dave. And would you look at that through the magic of cooking through show? Through the magic of cooking show, sandwiches mom the hell? are done. They should be looking something like this. Time to get them off and put them on a plate. One. This isn't the the pro move, by the way. Don't close them. Last me. thing to do, just. Cut it in half and get a the melt part. And I gotta tell you, this actually did taste like a pepperoni pizza. It was really good, and it's really easy, really quick. Dude, I made these around a campfire when I was five. That's not a joke. We literally used to make these. You guys, do you guys know them? I think they're called hobo pies, aren't they? Isn't that what they're called? We had the little pie maker thing. You stick bread in there, and it's two little cast iron boys. You do this, and then the, the lines come out, and you hook them together, and you put them in the fire, and you cook them. Can't one slice it too tough. Well, because he put pepperoni in there, and he uses fucking Walmart knives. I was not being serious about being a bad therapist. <laughs> you would be a decent therapist. Your channel is very chill, and I try to be chill as well. Honestly, I Thank love you. you in a platonic Appreciate way. You. Much respect. <laughs> what is a hobo pie? What is a what? Oh, fuck. No, stop. No, no. No. A hobo pie. This. Uh, it's... I'll show you. Yep. I knew it. You just type it in. It's one of these boys. It literally looks like this. You put bread in between the two cast iron sides. And you just... Like, literally, I made, I made these when I was, like, five years old. Since I've been five years old. Easy. See, like it's it's like one of the only things that like pizza. Just put pizza in it. I don't know. You haven't had a a, a, a P, PB and J until you've had it inside one of these. But it always looks uneven. These are all very good, and they're usually quite cooked. Yeah, it's more like this. It's more like this, but it's nice. It's really nice. Bean witches. Because we would use refried beans, like inside, right? Not, not, not on the outside. Is that not a panini? A panini is pressed. A panini. This is not a panini press. This is encased and literally shoved into the fire. Like this. This isn't at all how paninis work. I appreciate you, Electro. It's fine. You're good. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate all your support.
Me either. Uh, I went camping with them. I don't know. We always went camping, and we would have these. Like, I've never been camping in Michigan, and someone didn't have these. It's, like, super common. I've never used these, though. Fun. Uh, I was trying to see if they have, like... Oh, yeah. Like, a s'mores. These can get fucking good, dude. Yeah. Highly recommend. Also, you could just put, like, one slice of cheese in there and just have a ball in uh, grilled cheese. So that's a pepperoni pizza grilled cheese. Done. Eating one-year-old meat from a jar? I don't want to watch him eat one-year-old meat from a fucking jar, dude. I already watched Dave make that fucking abomination. I don't think... 